Hello and welcome to our brief presentation on the MPATH, ECMS, ECMS1, and how it's applied. These days we have new challenges and those challenges include being able to obtain information on our systems remotely in order to reduce exposure of employees. Besides, how fun is it trying to drink your coffee while wearing a mask? So the empath system the, is designed to monitor from a distance or collect data on site on AC and DC motors, generators, and transformers, as well as incoming power and the driven equipment. In effect, it will see the entire electrical system in one shot. The ECMS is an independent continuous monitoring system primarily meant for use in a motor control center. It will take in 32 channels and each channel means all three voltages and all three currents from an electric motor through an e-plug. There are no annual fees for software updates. There are no per seat fees. It also has a non-SQL database in which you can access with any of you, your ERP uh, systems in order to monitor long term. It also has built in the ability to send SMS or emails in order to alert you should there any alarms come up. Brand new to our offering is the ECMS-1, which was originally designed around the concept of being able to look at an entire wind turbine from the generator to the coupling through a multi-stage gearbox, main bearings, and blades, all in one shot from just voltage and current. We need no other inputs. On the power quality and general condition monitoring, for continuous systems, we can look at voltage and current, power and power factor, voltage and current harmonics, load and output torque, energy efficiency, mechanical unbalance or misalignment, uh, a rotor health index, line frequency, RPM, pole pass frequency, static external. Basically, all of these are trended automatically and continuously, and then periodically a full analysis is also performed, which takes a look at the output side of the machine into the load. The periodic analysis looks at that power quality and direct electric machine conditions, motor or generators. Uh, it will also look at those load conditions I mentioned, such as fans, pumps, belts, and gearboxes, as well as identifying loose connections and developing winding shorts or winding stresses. The periodic analysis can be used on induction machines, synchronous machines, variable frequency drives, transformers, asynchronous and synchronous generators, DC motors and generators, as well as driven equipment including planetary gearboxes as well as multi-stage gearboxes, fans and pumps, belts and other loads. It has already a built-in database of electric motors for rotor bars and, radar, uh, and rotor slots as well as stator slots. It also has a built-in bearing database with over 64,000 bearings and it auto detects information that is not available including those rotor bars and stator slots if you don't have that information. When scheduling continuous monitoring it utilizes a scheduler which determines when to collect analysis data it will also only collect data when the equipment is operating, allowing for proper trending. It will then send alerts to email or cell phones based on the data you enter. You can look quickly at the data online uh, with a quick analysis view, uh, or you can use the complete independent empath software. They work directly together. So whether you're using a one of the continuous monitoring devices 
or you are using the data collector, you have access to the exact same for information. You can open both, you can view both, and you can analyze both. The data collector uses standard BN connections for voltage up to 700 volts. It uh, has additional uh, BNC connections for other uh, inputs such as vibration analysis. You do have to identify if you want to collect vibration with those two so that we can add in the appropriate components. Such as uh, applications such as elevators would utilize that because all of that equipment will be right next to each other. There is a printer cable connection for USB connection to laptop and it uses a laptop for power supply. It has a CAT5E for e-plug connections, and it can be used for continuous monitoring. The empath analysis, it will do an automatic fault analysis. It auto detects speed, and it will analyze based upon the information you put in. There is no learning period required. It will, on first install or first data collection, tell you exactly what it sees based upon industry established uh, alarms and alerts. The raw operating data is also produced up to and including the efficiency of the system and any phase impedances. Bearing analysis is included in the system and will identify not just which bearing but which component of the bearing is having challenges. There is also torsional analysis capability built in. This will work for induction machines and generators, in particular asynchronous generators, including a torque spectra in order to confirm the type of data you're looking at. So what are the limits with an empath system? There are very few limits. So for instance, we can take a look at pumps on VFDs. In this particular application, we were able to identify static eccentricity because of poor alignment practices. As you can see here, uh, the bolt goes in just ahead of the shims so that it actually causes the center of the rotor to bow. That data was taken directly off of the large VFD for these machines. For something like a 13.8 kV synchronous machine, we can collect data, regardless of the system, right from the back of, say, in this case, it's a multi-LIN. So we're collecting data right off the CTs and PTs up supplied with the system so that we are seeing much lower voltages and currents. And then we can up those within the software so that we're seeing the actual values. Wind is pretty significant part of our business because uh, of the need for remote analysis. And the challenges we run into there are the controls, whether they're up tower or down tower. There's three primary ones that are up tower for, uh, for land-based wind. The generator itself, the gearbox, blades and hubs and main shaft. For the generator and gearbox, you're talking about costs upwards of over 100000 just to pull one down or, or install it. And that's just the crane cost plus the all the costs to repair. Most of the types of faults we can detect are actually up tower repairs, which become a fraction of that, uh, that other cost and can be done much quicker so that a wind turbine is only out of service for a short time. The main shaft related issues will often detect poor lubrication practices on the main bearings. That means that all the grease hasn't come out so we'll actually see a signature that indicates that um, the rollers are going over dried grease. And then finally we'll see if there's any misalignment in the uh, blades uh, on the hub. We've seen other conditions within wind turbines including base issues as well and usually we'll do that in collaboration with other technologies. Now for wind turbines there's a lot of issues in the generator itself. So for instance in this case bearings are number one, stator wedges are number two, rotors are number three, the collector rings and brushes 
our number four, and so on. So we detect all of these conditions except for cooling systems. <laughs> And one of the more popular ones for more than half the turbines uh, in the U.S. and Canada, it's upwards of two-thirds, uh, are wiring issues. And we're very, very able to detect those well in advance. So what are we dealing with as far as in the wind turbines? Well, here's an example of uh, some different types of gearboxes. And on the right is a main bearing. In the gearbox themselves, we have a high speed stage, which on the generator, because it goes low to high. Uh, then we have a mid speed, we have a low speed, then we have a planetary gear set. So we'll be going from 14 to 20 RPM up to 1200 to 1800 RPM. We can see every bearing, every gear in this type of system, plus that 14 to 20 RPM shaft and related bearings and the blades. The consequences, of course, uh, run anywhere from having to replace a generator to uh, other conditions with the generator that, that have to be dealt with and can be very expensive. What we want to see is everything running and generating power. As you can see here, there are three turbines that are having issues. Uh, difficult to see, but on the left there are two. Those are down for certain conditions. Uh, we were analyzing the other towers specifically to identify those conditions. And on the far right, that one tower sticking up there without blades uh, had an issue with the blades. So when we take a look at a wind turbine, we can collect data from down tower for, um, for instance, the GE towers make up more than half of the towers in the present population, about 32,000 of the 61,500 wind turbines in the U.S. alone. And we can collect that data readily down tower. On average, uh, it takes uh, less than a half an hour per tower. The generator for most of these have wiring issues, so fractured wiring on the right, for example. Uh, the ability to go in and take a look at that was first studied on 40 wind turbine generators in Canada and of the 40 units, 21 were identified uh, with wiring fractures. They knew of 20, we found an additional one, uh, and all of those defects were confirmed. That was a 100% site. Um, the rest of the site was well maintained or the site was well maintained, so certain conditions we're not present. We do run into those in other sites that simulate the wiring fractures, so we will identify that those exist if they exist. So when we do take a look at the analysis, this is how it uh, can look. Um, this is a worst case, probably the worst turbine we've seen to date. Um, we were able to get it running long enough to collect data and um, then we were able to, just through simple calculations and knowing what systems were there, identify which peaks related to the turbine and which were noise. We can also do a waterfall plot. So some of that noise, we'll take a look at a waterfall and see if it's just a time varying or speed varying uh, condition. In our higher frequency data, the top is voltage and current. Uh, we can analyze different conditions there, such as in this case we have a definite rotor wiring issue, uh, and we also have um, a fair amount of noise indicating winding stress in that rotor. We have a number of gearbox issues. In the lower signature, that is our power spectrum. That it can be switched to looking at the direct kilowatt, so we can actually look at the watts lost across a particular defect to identify both the severity of the defect, how much time it has remain, how much remaining life it has, but also to identify how much energy can be saved in production uh, through correcting the problem. Basically, it's a measurement of a loss of efficiency. Here's an example of identifying high speed thrust bearing in a gearbox. 
the peaks under the red arrows. And then of course high speed gear mesh with some looseness, a lot of small peaks on either side. Now all of those are automatically detected. So you don't have to sit and calculate those out and, and find them in that mess. Um, they, uh, which is an unusual one of course, but um, the system will identify those peaks automatically. And then here in Torque, to separate it out, we can identify that planetary gearbox and other gearbox bearing issues. So to give an example of success, the, on, to date, meaning as of uh, August uh, of um, 2020, we had tested over 1,700 generators. 430 will take a snapshot. Uh, we identified over 940 confirmed faults. We also take a look and distribute the, uh, the criticality per site, meaning that when we take a look at a site, we get an idea across the entire site and we score the turbines based upon the site. That is our preferred method. However, we do have sites that have their own equipment and are doing their own analysis and uh, they have their own scoring system or utilize this to identify the location of faults in order to confirm it with vibration or some other technology. Thank you for your time. Uh, some key features with the Empath and the Empath CMS is that they're all affordable. Uh, there are no annual licensing fees. There is no self-training time, meaning you do not have to wait weeks of self-learning in order to identify different faults. Uh, it's just straight electrical signature analysis. Uh, the software updates for minor increments are free and uh, a very affordable for the next, so we just don't charge the, the annual fees. There is training available, include adva including advanced analysis, wind sites and repair service sites for the wind industry are the only ones who are allowed to learn the wind diagnostics. Um, there is data analysis support available. Either we can do the interpretation for you if there's an advanced issue or when you run into issues when you're doing your own analysis, uh, we're available to support. It is reverse compatible with uh, the software meaning that I can go back to data that I took back in the year 1999 and see that now with the same software um, many iterations along. And the Empath and the Empath CMS talk to each other, meaning that I have the same features in both. And with that, thank you very much. If you have uh, questions or wish for a quote, please uh, contact us at info at motordoc.com. You can use the 800 number or just call direct at 630-310-4568. Thank you very much.